Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today I'm covering Real Housewives of New York Season 3, Episode 8. Let's see that ring. Oh, such another, just another great episode of just such a good season. So much stuff happening, so much we want to talk about. I can't wait. Let's get into it. So, of course, Sonia joined this mid-season. So this is the first time we're actually seeing her in the opening scene. We see this picture here, and her tagline is, I have a taste for luxury, and luxury has a taste for me. So we start off at Jill's house, and Jill is trying to promote this vet that she found that will make house calls. Ginger has been acting weird, and so she wanted Ginger to be seen by these vets. And what happens? Ginger's fine. She gets so scared she poops everywhere. Gets poop on everything, including all over this poor guy's shoe. And Jill's making comments like, well, at least the shoe's plastic. It'll wipe off easily. Then we go over to Alex's house, and Alex is having Bethany over just to catch up. It's been a little while. And Alex asks how she is, and she says, just we engaged? So it's so exciting. She doesn't tell Alex about the baby yet because she says she wants to wait to tell people about that. But they did get engaged, and so she's showing off her ring, and she said she's the first one she's telling. It's because, you know, she doesn't really have her family, and... So it's just nice that she can share this with Alex. She's saying it was romantic. He got down on one knee. They were both crying. And uh, she kind of had an idea it was coming, but not exactly sure when. And Alex is asking if they've set a date yet. And she says, no, not yet. So all exciting things. She can't wait. She can't wait to share it with everybody. So then we have Ramona and Sonia at lunch. They are catching up. They're talking about the Kodak event, Jill's event, where Ramona was acting nuts. Ramona tells Sonia uh, th about what she said about Kodak being antiquated. And Ramona's asking for her read on Kelly. Sonia says, you know, I was looking forward to meeting her. We're both always, uh, we, were, we used to be in St. Bart's all the time. She'd walk by, she'd say hi, but she doesn't remember. And Ramona says, you know, that's so typical. She's not a woman's woman. And this comes up a lot. Bethany brings it up later that she's more... Into the guys, doesn't really care about what the, you know, getting to know the women. Then we go over to this cafe, and I'm sorry, but this storyline is so staged. Ramona's going through her renewal and her transformation, <laughs> and she's asked Avery to lunch, and I'm not going to pick on a kid per se. Avery's an adult now, so I'll talk about her now, but sometimes in, you can see if somebody's going to grow up to be a little snot, and that's just uh, just a hunch I have here. Okay, uh, so it's all stage. She's like, will you be my bridesmaid? And Avery's pretending to think about it. She agrees. They're going to renew their vows. Moving on. Then we see Lou apartment hunting, and she is countess at her finest here. It's so funny. She runs into Kelly on the street. They're surprised. She's like, well, come see this apartment with me. And every apartment they look at, I mean, she's finding fault. There's something wrong. I feel like she just didn't have anything else to do right now so she's like hmm, you can just film me apartment hunting she goes to these apartments the rents are just outrageous i know it's new york city and i also know this was many years ago but damn like this one she's looking at was about fourteen thousand a month and she's like no 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 this is not gonna work for me and i think i'm better suited for uptown i'm more of an uptown girl then we go over to Jill's. It's her mom. It's her sister, Lisa. They're all over. They're working on this book that they hope to be able to pass down. And I, it's a whole thing. Jill has said before they do everything in bed. It's a bed family. They've always grown up doing that. Mom's talking about her wedding picture and advice she'd give to brides. And don't wear chiffon on Christmas Day if you can help it. And Okay. We go over to Sonia, Lou, and Kelly. They're meeting for dinner, drinks, whatever. And Sonia is doing this thing that she does even now where she says, she talks about having gained weight. Then she tells everybody she wants to start Adderall. Well, Kelly says, well, it'll make you like Ramona, where she's on fire. She yells at people for no reason. And when you're that offensive and combative, there's something wrong. Luda Camera says, three women on the town. We have a lot of life. And... A lot of love to give. Lou's in her own little world. 
Um, and they just go back and forth. They talk about what they want. Uh, Kelly says she wants to get married and maybe have more babies. And they're kind of surprised by this. And it's just interesting. They're all at the similar points where they're all three divorced. It's just, they just want different things. So it's interesting to see them together. Then we have Kelly hosting a party for Gotham Magazine, 100 Most Eligible Bachelors. She's worried about inviting the ladies because she calls them wild cards and she doesn't want them to embarrass her. And right as she's saying that, Ramona walks in. They seem to make up, or at least they're friendly on surface terms. Kelly does say that she's still pissed and she was worried about Ramona. Um, Kelly is wearing this teeny tiny dress and it's so funny. Uh, everybody arrives and Bethany says, what are we, what are we all wearing? We are, we're all told to wear a square of toilet paper as an outfit, <laughs> which is funny because that's exactly what Kelly's dress looks like. We see Court here, which is hilarious because he's the creepy guy that Lou ends up going on a weird date with later. This is the first time Mario and Lou are seeing each other. She's trying to get him to apologize. He won't do it. They're speaking Italian. I'd say they're equally as cringy as each other. Jill and Lou continue to be up each other's asses, and Bethany comes over, you know, to be near the group, and that's when they make their hasty exit. Jill can't stand it, has to get away. There you go. Bethany is excited to show everybody her ring and to talk about being engaged. Ramona seems truly happy for her, and just everybody's excited. They're all celebrating. So Bethany's truly happy, and Kelly runs over, and decides to share this news with Jill and Lou. Jill knows the camera's pointed at her, so she says, mm, I hope she's happy. Jason ends up coming over, and Kelly hugs him, and it's weird. And Jill's being fakey, and she's saying, I'm so uncomfortable, I don't know what to do. And they wish him well, and Lou goes over to kiss Bethany and say congratulations. And she uses this opportunity to try to force Bethany into apologizing for the outbursts, you know, at the fashion show previously. So they do. They kind of make up and clear the air. I'm sure Jill will be pissed about that. Jason, meanwhile, is standing behind her, making sure Bethany's okay, which I thought was kind of sweet. Don't judge me, but I miss Simon. It's so funny. Simon encourages Jill to come over and say hi to Bethany. Bethany's saying it's like Mean Girls and that Jill's lost her mind. And Jill's telling Bobby, um, if I leave without saying anything, then I'm mean. And so it's just, it's interesting to see how this all plays out. So Bethany goes to leave and Jill finds her outside. Bethany's saying she just can't be happy for me and she has anxiety. And Jill comes out and said, Bethany, just before you leave, I want to say... I wanted to wait for Bobby to come over and tell you congratulations. And Bethany says, thank you. You know, it's very weird. She said, I was waiting for him. Simon knew that. No, Simon was encouraging you to come out and talk to, talk to Bethany. Jill says, I'm sorry you thought I walked away from you. Congratulations. Again, so shitty and loaded. Bethany camera says, I realize I don't want anything to do with Jill. Jill looks at the ring, made a big deal out of it, and Bethany says, I'm starting to see her true colors, and I've had it up to here with her. Jill to camera saying she was so cold, cold as ice, and that's exactly what I was afraid of. After seeing her face, it's, it's not how I wanted this to end our friendship. And Bethany is saying the only thing she got excited about is the ring, and to camera saying it's just over, there's nothing left. Jill, however, to camera saying, even though I said we were done, there's something that makes me want to see if there's anything there left. So Jill's full of shit. She's just, I think she's just looking for the camera and maybe the audience approval, I don't know, or that she's hoping the audience will say, oh, poor Jill, she's trying. Then we get our mid-season trailer and there's so much good stuff coming up. We have Money Can't Buy You Class. We find out the Countess likes to sing. This very awkward date with Court. Oh, cringe. We have just shut it down. Just shut it down. Ramona drunk. Jill and Bethany having lunch. And it just continues to be awkward. All building up to Scary Island. Um, Alex telling Jill she's a mean girl and in high school. And Jill pretending to be upset about it. 
and Scary Island. Oh, I cannot wait to talk about Scary Island. I feel like I could talk for three hours about Scary Island. And I am so excited to talk about it all. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I appreciate all the support. You guys are amazing. Um, and I hope you have the best week. And I can't wait to talk more about this soon. Take care. Bye-bye.